Hello and welcome to part 4 of the intro to Caden Live. Now, I'd originally planned to talk to you about all of the effects in Caden Live today, but I realize now that there are far too many to actually go over all of them. So what I'm going to do is show you some of the most common ones that I use and some other ones that are sort of fun. So, as per usual, we'll go ahead and open up Caden Live. Drag in some clips. I've pre-selected a couple from my collection and just drag one into the timeline. Go into your effects list. Like I said, you've got a whole slew of options here to choose from. Now, under the audio, the one that I use most commonly is either mute or gain. Now, I know that it is probably preferable to use volume instead, but I use gain. I don't really get any distortion like I, I expected I would. Uh, see, if I add the gain effect, I can take the 100% volume I've currently got and take it up or down however much I want to. I've noticed that my volume capture in Ubuntu can be a little bit quiet, so I normally will take that 100% and take it to 250 or 300%, and what would have been kind of soft actually turns into a very reasonable level compared to other things. Now, moving on down, mute, of course, does exactly what you think it would do. It takes the volume from whatever you put it onto and makes it silent, so if I drag it here, this video becomes silent. You can actually adjust the gain there, and I don't understand why you'd want that in a mute effect. If you wanted gain, you'd use game. Normalize, I've never used, but I believe that it's probably pretty useful to keep the audio at one set level. I've actually used the reverb effect one time when I was trying to get an echo effect. It worked pretty decently. There are a lot of these that I just haven't had a reason to use yet. Equalizer is probably really nice because you can equalize out the different levels. Again, haven't had a reason to use it. Under audio correction, like I said, there's a volume here where you can set the volume at different points in the video. If I actually add it to this, you see 100% audio at the beginning and the end. If I add a different position here, it, it adds 2005, which is exactly in the middle of the video. I can say change that to 250%. And what it'll do is it'll start at 100%, and by the time it's at 10 seconds, it will move up to 250% gradually, like this little white line implies, and then back down. And you can actually click on these little dots and move it around, completely adjust wherever you want each section to be, and it will update accordingly. Now, some of these other ones, you know, blur, you can actually obscure areas of the video. Not terribly useful unless you have something to hide. Color, you can do all sorts of different saturation things. You can actually put a hold on sections of the video, which is nice. If I take the variance on this all the way up, I have to click around to get it to update for some reason. But if I select that yellow color on Tux's foot, and then drop the variance back down to about 14, 12, something like that, you see all the rest of the color in the video went away except for that yellow color. Very neat. It's a very common effect that I see used in photography. Invert is, is kind of fun but not terribly useful. Sepia gives it that old styly feel. Let's see. As far as color correction, white balance is something I really need to start using because you'll see here the color is okay, but it all depends on your lighting. If I add the white balance plug-in, I can actually select what color I want to be white. And this is a very new plugin. This is something people have been asking for for several releases. Now if I say Tux's belly right here is white, then the rest of the picture adjusts accordingly. This is actually going to become very helpful for me. If I wanted to do like an overlay like Wheezy Waiter does, you have to white balance it. So the crop and scale, I will not recommend using the crop and scale ones. I'm sure there are a lot of people that use them. I just prefer to do all of my scaling, all of my movement and everything using the composite feature. The composite transition I'm going to talk about at length in next week's video, so if you've ever wanted to know how to put something on top of something else, how to use the green screen effect, which we're going to get to here in a minute, and any of the things like that, you come back for next week's video and I will be glad to talk about it. Distort has some interesting effects, but again, not terribly useful for a lot of videos. You see this mirrors the effect, you can change the direction and all that. Play with these effects and just see what they do, see if you like them or not. Fade from black and fade to black are incredibly useful. You can adjust here, if I actually zoom in by using this little scroll bar at the bottom, you can adjust just how long it takes to do your fade in, or you can do it here with your slider bar. So if I wanted to come back here to the beginning of the video, it's black right now, and as I scroll forward, you see it comes in from, from black to the video itself. The same thing applies for the fade to black. Fade in, fade out does the same thing, but for audio. So if I do a fade in, you see here it has that same slider bar and it fades from no sound to full sound after that certain amount of time. You could actually use the keyframeable volume effect for the same reason. That's entirely up to you. If you just want to have this one fade in, that's probably the easiest way to do it. 
Now as far as the fun ones, the majority of these actually apply to if you wanted to make something look like it was an old film. You can add dust, grain, noise, some saturation issues, vignetting around the corners to actually make it look like it's kind of dark around the corners. Again, it's useful if you want to make something look kind of old. The dust and the grain are fun, but I haven't seen a terrible use for them. You see it puts little specks of dust on what would be the quote film. Moving right along, miscellaneous, you've got blue screen. This is the one we're going to talk about next time. You actually have to use the composite transition to use the blue screen, and you have to have a color that you can completely take out of the video. Ubonite did a very excellent video on doing chroma key. I'll be talking about that a little bit next time, but mostly I'm going to be talking about using compositing for moving items around. I will be talking about doing blue screen though, which means I need to capture some blue screen video. Other than that, I've not had much chance to use these or much reason to use these, because as you see it does some really strange things. The other key one for me is always speed because as you see I've got a 20 second video here if this is 20 seconds of something booting up that nobody really wants to see you can add the speed effect and take it up to a thousand percent at the maximum and you see that video that was 20 seconds is now two seconds so it's a thousand percent faster as soon as you hit that speed from 100 to 101 percent Caden Live cuts out the audio not a big fan of that but neither here nor there now the freeze effect, it actually freezes at a certain point in time, and you can either freeze before or after that. Not something I've had the reason to use yet, but you see I said freeze before 119. So up until that point now, this shouldn't be doing anything. And now after that point, you see the video start, actually starts happening. There's really nothing going on in the video, so it's kind of hard to you see the, the eyes flash there. Now if I change that from freeze before to freeze after, the eyes will not flash there but there will be stuff that happens before that point, like me moving around. Somewhat useful if you want to freeze at a certain point in the video. I would actually like to be able to freeze on a frame and not lose the rest of my video, but that's just an opinion. But yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the built-in effects are concerned. I actually have the Free Or plugins, F-R-E-I-0-R, I believe is how it's spelled. And the, the free or plugins actually add quite a few effects to the default list. You see here you've got threshold and threshold or. The ones that have the number zero in them are generally the ones that are the free or plugins. There used to be one called balance or. I think that is actually what became white balance. But realistically, that's about all there is to effects. Play around with them, see which ones you like, see which ones you don't. Like I said, the ones that I use most often are mute and gain for audio speed to get my video to speed up if I want to skip over a section, compositing which is a transition but I sort of use it as an effect and that's about it. I mean the, there are a bunch of effects there I don't have a use for them. I, I will be using the white balance a whole lot more often though so that's all there really is to say about effects in Caden Live. I will be doing a review on Linux Mint 9 this Wednesday so make sure to check that out. As always thank you for watching and I will see you next time.